I've got 500 pounds and I'm gonna try and turn this into a Volkswagen Transporter. The plan is quite simple. Buy a 500 pound dinger, tidy it up with the best detailing products in the game, make it look nice, sell it on for a tidy profit, and then invest that money into another car, which we can then repeat the process. Now, I'm adamant that with your guys' support behind me, we're gonna absolutely smash this, and we'll trade our way up from dingers to diamonds pretty quickly. But we ain't got time to sit around. We need to go and find ourselves our first dinger. So off to eBay we go. Jumping straight in the deep end, I headed over to eBay, punched in my 500 pound price limit, and this little lupo caught my attention straight away. Turns out it's a Cambridge edition, which is also really cool. Albeit clean and I wanted to go for, it was definitely going to be a good candidate to kick things off. So I was intrigued, I dropped the seller a message, and it went a bit like this. <coughs> Behind the wheel, we've got the trailer in tow, and we're off to have a look at this Lupo. However, I did get a message late last night from John saying that the car wouldn't start. This is going to be a complete gamble. I could be going and buying an absolute paperweight, but I think it's definitely a risk that we need to take. He's had the AA out, and they have said it could well be a problem with the HT leads or the spark plugs. Now, both quite easily fixed, however, that might not be the case when we get there, who knows? I'm taking a complete shot in the dark. The car's locked, loaded, ready to head back to Norfolk. Let's get this little beauty home and I can show you the car in all its glory. Now, I'm a little bit content with myself because the car's a bit of a gem, really. I think we've actually struck gold with this one because she's a beauty. No, your ears aren't deceiving you. I definitely just called the car a peach and I am overjoyed with my purchase. But let's not forget the elephant in the room here. I've just bought a car, I don't know if it works, I don't know what is actually wrong with it, and it could end up costing me an absolute fortune to even get this thing to start. But, for some reason, my optimism was going high. And then, well, this happened. Starts the car has actually started. It's just a dodgy key. Oh, what a relief! What a relief! Just like that, the little looper has started. All it was was a faulty key, and now she is purring like a kitten. I had read on a forum that these cars do struggle with an immobilizer problem in the key, and thankfully, that is what the case was this time with this little one. Got an extra £50 off because the possibility of having to change the spark plugs and the HT leads. So we got this car for a price of £450. And I'm going to say it again. What a peach! £450 quid for this car is an absolute steal. Now let's have a little look around the car and show you all her glory. need to stop getting too excited though because there are a few jobs we have to do before we can flip this thing for a tidy profit. As for the bumper, well, it's been bumped. The alloy wheels have been curved and need painting. The headlights are showing their age. They've gone cloudy and need polishing. 
The carpet is a bit grotty. These number plates have definitely seen better days. Finally, the last, but I think most important job is we're gonna decontaminate the car, give it a full machine polish, dress the plastics, make all the things that are, should be black, black again, remove the badges, and I think the car will be absolutely spot on. Without further ado, we've got plenty of work to be getting on with. We've got the badges removed of the Lupo. Obviously there is some slight marks where we took the badge off, but when we machine polish the car, that will be gone and it will be absolutely awesome. A clean, fresh rear end will go a long way when it comes to selling this car. As you can see, mine has removed plenty of badges in its time. <laughs> We all have dreams. As car guys, we all have a list of dream cars that we would love to own. Now in my instance, I spend many a nights on Facebook Marketplace, trawling the web, searching for a perfect transporter. Knowing full well, I don't actually have the funds behind me to go and acquire one if I did find it, but that is all gonna change. And you guys are gonna come with me as we make this dream happen. To get maximum return on this car, we need to make sure that every inch of it is looking spick and span. Now, the wheels on this thing are really letting down the overall appearance of this car. They're curbed, they look tatty. So we're gonna get the wheels off the car now, one by one, sand them back, give them a new lease of life, fresh coat of paint, and then hopefully when we put them back on the car, it will really transform the look of this thing.
alloy wheels are one of the first things that people look at when going to buy a car. It catches their attention straight away. Now, if your wheels are curved and don't look very looked after, then people are going to be put off or they will use it as a tool to bargain down the price when it comes to negotiating. As you can see, our wheels are now looking really smooth. We've flattened out all the curb rash around the side of the wheel and on the faces of the wheel. It's now time to get it cleaned up, prepped, and then we can shoot down some paint on this. Wow, what a transformation that one wheel is going to make to the car. But one wheel isn't good enough. We've got three more to be getting on with, so I'm going to put the camera down, get all three done, and then we will regroup when all four wheels are freshly refurbished. Pumped up with air and back on the car. The little Lupo is now looking a million dollars after having those wheels refurbished. Just check out how good they look. The wheel arches on our little Lupo are pretty grimy. Now, little tip here. When you come to sell a car, people aren't going to see the wheel arches straight away, so it's not going to deter them there, but when they come for a closer inspection of the vehicle, they will think the car hasn't been looked after too well because of the state of mud and grime that's built up under here. We all know someone who loves their car will clean this area of the car just as much as the outside. But we're going to sort that out now. I'll pull the camera in, show you how grimy it is in here, get some more FNS products on the go and get this thing looking really nice. The little Lupo is starting to look really good. The wheels are on, the wheel arches have been washed out, and I think this thing is starting to look awesome. But we aren't quite at the end of the tunnel, although I can see the light at the end of it. We need to get it washed, decontaminated, and then break out the machine polisher and start restoring some gloss back into the old girl. Square away the interior, getting the fabric cleaned and wet back, and then we can do the final few touches. Put the new number plates on, touch up any paint that needs touching up, and then get this thing advertised. 